Welcome everyone to the Wasabi Research Club and this time we still don't have Aviv but luckily we have the wonderful David with us who would like to start this meeting with a joke. Let's go. Hi there. Thank you for the, the interviews. I'm I'm embarrassed. Thank you. So last time you you told that uh, I had the example with the, the cat and the microwave and there is another story with an, uh, as far as I know, maybe it's just a rumor, but did you know why in America and the car mirror on the left and right, there is a, a small text that the object in the mirror can be closer than, than they are, they look like. Did you know that there is a text like that on the mirrors? No. No, me neither. It, it's the same story as far as I know that a, gay, a guy went to the court because the mirror, you know, it's a... <clears throat> you know, it's not a flat mirror because you want to see more. So it's it's a bit... Uh, how do you say that? It's, it's not... Convex. A, Yes, it's convex. And convex mirrors <clears throat> gives the effect that you know that the object looks closer and they, he went to the court with that and and he won. So afterwards every <clears throat> mirror, car mirror uh, manufacturer put this text on the mirror that the object can be closer. So that's it. <laughs> wow, what a is like the... It's similar, you know, the cat and the microwave. Don't put your cat into the microwave because there was one <laughs> one, one uh, judgment about this in the past and uh, they want to cover their, their asses. This is how America works in general. This is also why they label uh, hot drinks, like contents may be hot or something like that. For every one of those, there's a lawsuit. Uh, and I think the, the hot one had to do with a lady who got like second degree burns or something by spilling coffee on her lap. So now every time you buy a hot drink, it says caution contents may be hot. <laughs> yeah. And, a, and a bag of peanuts has a warning about that. It might contain some peanuts. <laughs> It's, I could I could bring this this to the Bitcoin world. <laughs> okay. I you know what I don't even tell my example. Let's go into today's show. <laughs> so, um, you guys who whoever missed uh, last episode, you might. You, I, I just want to 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 bring bring everyone up to date that uh, right now we are not reviewing paper, but so we are not a review club club, but we are a research club, as the name implies. We are researching now, and every week we are going to talk about uh, our research progress. And just to reiterate, the big picture is that we are looking into coin joints and we are looking into how to generalize them. Um, what's the goal here is that we want to enable trustless creation of coin joints. Those have not been enabled, enabled before. For example, there was this wonderful NAPSAC paper, which, which would like to optimize on the number of subset of transactions, but no one figured out how to do Napsack mixing in a in a trustless way before, or blockchain info had his shared coin implementation, and no one really figured out how do you do shared coin style transactions in a trustless way before. And right now we are working on a solution, and hopefully we will find one. Actually, we found and talked about one last week and we talked about a less optimal scheme last week and right now we have two more schemes which uh, which we are going to talk about and 
let's see what else oh yeah so what what do we really want to achieve is that a user could should be able to register their inputs separately independently and their outputs separately independently regardless of what the input and output desired output amounts are and that's not uh, <laughs> and that's not a uh, not an obvious there is an obvious way to 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 do that and as far as i research went no one has uh, really figured it out there were there are some very complex e-cache divisible e-cache schemes and what what some some privacy altcoins are doing that that could be useful here too however for coin joins we have a security guarantee that if a user does not see his desired output in the final mixed transaction then uh, it's not going to sign which means we can make less compromises in our scheme and hopefully we should be able to come up with something simpler than let's say the divisible e cash uh, papers are coming up with and let's go into our very first protocol which is an acl based scheme um it's anonymous credential slide is a paper which we read and modified it in a way that suits our needs um can i ask someone maybe istvan to screen share here sure yes thank you um let's see our hmm, we should talk about it uh, would would you like to go through the high level scheme uh istvan or nothing much yeah i mean i i can do it uh sure so like last time we were we covered basically two schemes like one was kind of broken and the second one was okay and we didn't we didn't really go into the details uh but it was a scheme on um so it was a blind signature scheme which allowed to have a blind signature on messages which are committed in the pedersen commitment but sadly it required pairing based crypto and uh, pairing based crypto is a little bit further and far from what we would like to achieve um so and then i think it was yuval or uh, um adam who brought this paper into discussion it was also discussed in the wasabi research club uh two or three weeks ago um and one immediate thing which one needs to uh see is that it doesn't require any pairing based crypto which is nice because we can just work on on our regular beloved and secp 256 k1 curve um the high level picture is essentially the same we have a nice commitment scheme which is our beloved again pedersen commitment scheme and we can obtain unlinkable blind signatures on blinded commitments um which are, which cannot be linked to the original. So here we have uh, C1, C2, C3. These are commitments, and we can get from a coordinator, from a server, signatures on these Zeta uh, blinded commitments. And um, so basically, this is the high-level picture. Uh, and remember, we additionally need to have this input splitting and output uh, merging functionalities and this can be also achieved um so this is maybe just the first high level picture um 
shall I go into the details or, or what uh, do you want to hear about <laughs> more? Poor Lucas just left and he's going to implement it. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. Anyway, um, yeah, I, I just want to clarify that it was Nick Jonas who brought this paper up to our attention as far as I know. Okay. Um, all right. I. Yeah. Uh, so like we can go into the details if you want so like in uh, input registration let's say we shall, shall i uh, do it shall i go yes sure i just wanted to say that uh, i would like to avoid calling these blinded commitments and blinded signatures because if you call these blinded that kind of means the server knows and the user unblinds them which is not the case these are obtained signatures for commitments. Those correspond to the original commitments and the server never sees the signatures and never sees the these new commitments. But yes, the ACL scheme actually calls them blinded. Anyway, yeah, go ahead. Uh, they, the server does see them at signature verification. It's just that they're not linkable to the uh, signing protocol. Yes, sorry, correct. So at input registration, it does not see only at output registration. Hey guys, no para here and my internet is gone and it doesn't want to come back. So I'm just going to go through the ACL based scheme so what do we have here? Um, let's see, we want to, as always, we want to solve amount splitting and amount merging. How do we do that? Well, it turns out if we figure out amount splitting, not exactly correct, but in this case, yes, then we are going to have amount merging too. Um, so we start with user has a UTXO with value V. So let's say you have one Bitcoin and you want to split into outputs with values V1 and V2. Let's say that 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 such that V equals V1 plus V2. So one Bitcoin equals 0 0.4 and 0 0.6. Uh, this is splitting and what happens at input registration? User creates n pedders and commitments. C1 equals CV1 R1. R is the random factor here. Uh, V1 is of course the value and we create a number of pedders and commitments and we say we have some fake pedders and commitments here from three to n which values are zero and the vi terms corresponds to a single attribute l0 in the acs signature with an empty message with range proofs for each so anyway this just clarifies the notation differences between the acl anonymous credential liked paper which you can see never mind so and you also have to prove the range of each commitment otherwise you could cheat so it's between 0 and 256 bits or something like that never mind so range proofs uh, this is what are being used for confidential transactions too um, the user also needs to prove the sum of the commitments. Of course, the pedders and commitment does that. Um, this is just some concern here that how to do that. Uh, you, you basically prove that if you give the sum of the R values, because then you will have an equation like V1 plus V2 plus V3, uh, if it's in a commitment and with the sum of the random values, then it's going to be, then that's how pedders and commitments work, that they are homomorphic. So you could, you could have a commitment and prove that, that the, the partial commitments equal to the sum. 
and this is how you register your inputs so now here is the non-trivial part and I only understand the high level picture here but let's see from this protocol the user obtains n signatures for n commitments in a way where the following properties hold so the coordinator can be sure that the uh, the obtained commitments are committing to the same values as the original commitments uh, neither the commitments nor the obtained signatures are known by the coordinator so this is important because otherwise it could link um, to these commitments to the original commitments ah uh, yeah and, and 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 it just says that the obtained signatures are unlinkable and the obtained commitments are unlinkable to the original commitments so and from here on it's quite simple at output registration um, user can say let's say the user wants to register 0 0.4 bitcoin by sending the coordinator the obtained commitment um, for the 0 0.4 bitcoin for v1 and the 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 r value um, I'm not quite sure if this this random value here is the same as the original commitment uh, maybe uh, probably I don't know <sighs> probably this 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 new commitment action not probably it definitely looks uh, different than than a normal Pedersen commitment so just just keep that in mind um, and of course you can register some zero commitments uh, along with the with, with the real commitment with, with the commitment that commits to the to the real value because the sum will be the same so and of course you have the valid signatures for for those commitments that you obtained in at input registration and and that's pretty much it uh, here we there is a long conversation about how many problems this scheme has but uh, but but it seems like we were able to 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 fix the the problems of this scheme and in fact um, we decided to not go with this anonymous credentials light based scheme but probably um, key verification anonymous credentials scheme is going to be a more straightforward approach than the ACL based scheme and this is not quite worked out as you can see there are no not many formulas here uh, that's because we didn't quite work it out but this seemed to make sense and this will be the this will be the topic next in the next wasabi research club and hopefully this will be the very last scheme that we will go through because this should solve our problem in a straightforward uh, non-compromised way and then we can move on to I am afraid to click on this because I don't have internet and then we will be able to move on to to come up with the next generation mixing technology and that's it again I'm sorry for the loss of internet as a compensation I'm going to play a bit of BitConnect hey 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 uh, and finally, the uh, coordinator replies with the, the final message, and the user can uh, finalize their uh, proof that they actually present um, 
uh, during uh, verification. And the paper nicely replicates the usual Sigma protocol notation, like the first message A denoted A, then E, and then yeah, it, C and R. Okay. So if, if, if the viewer is familiar with Sigma protocols and the literature, then can recognize this, uh, this pattern. By the way, I would strongly recommend to anyone who wants to read the ACL paper to uh, at least look at the introduction of uh, Abe's paper first, because um, it introduces a lot of these variable names, uh, and it uh, kind of gives a, a, a much clearer intuition for why the protocol even works. Um, in the ACL paper, it's a lot more uh, uh, dense and, uh, I mean, since it cites the Abe paper, it kind of assumes that uh, <laughs> like the reader already understands uh, the, the intuitions underlying it. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about uh, communication complexity here. So like one thing uh, one should notice is that the, this E is not just uh, some hash value, which could be obtained just by naively applying fiat Shamir heuristic. But this E term has a, a special structure, so it's um, it's crafted in a special way. So that's the reason that um, the sigma protocol here cannot be made just non-interactive, and this gives us essentially a five-move uh, blind signature scheme instead of the usual three-move, because um, the user gives here on the server um, the commitment and. Uh, proof for the opening of the commitment, then the server replies. Essentially, these two messages can be sent um, at once, and then the user needs to reply with this special value E. And just after this sending this E value, can the server uh, send the final message. Um, so this was another sign for us that we might not want to go with the with the ACL paper. And the because, fifth move, of course, is the signature verification. Yeah, and uh, because in current Wasabi, um, just the Xiaomi and blind signature scheme is just a regular free move blind signature scheme, and obviously. Over Tor, it's, it's, uh, so one needs to consider also the communication complexity, which is kind of more, um, yeah, more heavy than just regular HTTPS. Um, more to the point, it's uh, prone to failure. Uh, and failure in this case, um, like for the round to actually succeed, uh, all of the participants must, um, you know, uh, succeed. Uh, if if any one lo user loses connectivity, uh, everybody has to wait until they come back uh, or the whole round fails and you need to basically start over. Yeah. Okay, so let's finish. Uh, or is there anything to add or any questions regarding the ACL paper? Yes, I just want to say this. Sorry, guys, my internet went away and, of course, the recording, but now I'm recording again. And actually, I recorded the whole episode by myself. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> uh, go on. Mm, I think we are kind of finished with the ACL paper. Maybe now let's um, enhance and emphasize the, uh, why we are more leaning towards the Quack paper. Um, why we are considering that so far the best scheme we had, even though we didn't manage to fully elaborate on the coin merging uh, protocol. So my intuition is intuition. Uh, my understanding is that the quads paper, the quads approach is more straightforward and it probably requires less interactivity but correct me if i'm missing something or if i'm wrong yeah that's pretty much it um so the one major difference is that um these signatures are only verifiable by the signer 
since it's a, a Mac, it's not a public key signing scheme. Uh, this is an algebraic Mac, so unlike traditional Macs like uh, HMAC or whatever, uh, it's not built out of uh, hash functions, but out of uh, group operations. Um, and um, the, the this makes it so that uh, it's easier to uh, prove properties about the, the committed values. Um, very much like the ACL scheme, uh, the idea is that you have uh, multiple attributes that the, the signature covers or that the Mac covers. Um, and, uh, but because the, everything is uh, kind of uh, simpler, it doesn't need to be publicly verifiable. Um, this, uh, uh, the, the, the whole interaction is a little bit simpler. Uh, you only need three rounds to obtain a credential. And then when you go to uh, present a credential uh, or show a credential, I think that's the, the, the name they gave to the uh, algorithm in the paper, um, you make a, a zero knowledge proof that you have a valid uh, Mac on those values and present uh, randomized commitments uh, to the same values. Uh, and the the server uh, can verify this um, using their uh, uh, their secret key. Um, there's two variants of this. Uh, so the original paper by uh, Melissa Chase, Sarah Michael John, and uh, I always forget his name. I'm sorry. Um, introduced a scheme that um, attributes can only be uh, field values. Um, and in that scheme, that means that you need to uh, have some sort of blind issuance. Um, and the way that they do the, the blind issuance is by using uh, Elgamal encryption, uh, which is uh, very similar to uh, Patterson commitments, just with an additional um, term uh, that makes it um, uh, only computationally hiding, but it has like the same nice homomorphic properties. So basically you encrypt your um, attributes to yourself, you give them to the server with proofs that they're valid, and then you get back uh, a Mac that you can then decrypt um, uh, and later use to construct your uh, proofs when you show. Um, this paper that Ishtvan is uh, showing right now is a much more recent paper by um, uh, Melissa Chase, the third author whose name I forgot, and uh, Trevor Perrin. Um, and this is uh, designed for the uh, Greg Zavarucha. <laughs> Sorry, Greg. <laughs> um, so uh, this paper, uh, what they're trying to do is uh, solve uh, the problem of uh, uh, managing uh, who is included in a, a signal, uh, the encrypted messaging app, uh, who's, who's a member of a group um, in a way that the server can't really know. Um, and the, the main difference over the previous paper is that in this Mac scheme, uh, the attributes themselves can be uh, group elements. Uh, so this means we can directly use a Pedersen commitment as an attribute. Um, and since those are perfectly hiding, uh, that way, um, if we get it right, uh, we can be sure that uh, even if there's a quantum adversary, the coordinator is hacked and somebody breaks the uh, SecP 256K1 curve, uh, like worst case scenario, um, users should still not be de-anonymizable, um, which seems like a, a desirable property for uh, a protocol that attempts to improve on uh, Bitcoin's privacy uh, problems. Um, and other than that, this scheme is very similar to the, the other algebraic Mac, uh, so that, that that's the main difference. Um, I guess just, just thinking out loud, what would happen, happen if one would be able to hack the coordinator and get the coordinator's Mac secret key? Would there be any uh, privacy leak? So if one no, because the no, the the coordinator never sees the actual uh, like uh, the the values in the um, 
Uh, at input registration, you never reveal the actual values. You only prove in zero knowledge that they're committing to um, the, the right sum. Uh, and um, the, the Mac that the coordinator sends to the user um, is never presented by the user to the coordinator. Instead, the user produces a zero knowledge proof that they have a valid Mac. Um, and uh, that again is uh, like, there's no reliance on uh, computational hiding there. So um, at least in theory, uh, the coordinator can never de-anonymize, and even if the curve is completely broken, uh, what should uh, uh, be lost is um, a soundness, not the not the blindness of, of this uh, protocol. So, I mean, at, at that point, it's kind of all theoretical because Bitcoin is probably going to be in serious trouble uh, if anybody can uh, easily solve for discrete logarithms on the same curve that Bitcoin uses. Um, but let's assume that we can somehow fix this with, uh, you know, a magical soft fork. And uh, 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 even if all of the transcripts that the coordinator saw are then revealed after the fact, uh, it should be impossible, at least in theory, to... Um, to link uh, users' input registrations to their output registrations. Right. I find it funny that there's a group, namely Signal, who basically essentially solved the almost word by word the very same problem. So, like, you, you just need to replace group chats with coin joins, and uh, yeah, and then basically the same problem applies. Well, actually, if you read those parts of the, the paper, uh, they have a more serious challenge to deal with uh, because they need to like authorize users and deauthorize users, and some users are administrators of groups, and then uh, they they need to uh, still have like blind issuance. So to them, uh, yeah, right. Some it's, of the attributes. after a certain point, it's just a question whether you have one attribute or two, so or or more. Sorry. So well, they also make use of uh, the Elgamal encryption quite heavily, and uh, uh, they uh, uh, prove things about encryptions of user IDs and so on. So um, anyway, it is pretty interesting. Uh, can you can you elaborate on the not really a metaphor, but what's the connection between group chat and coin joins? So in this original paper, um, they want to make sure that uh, whenever a user com user wants to send um, a message in a group chat, um, the user wants to convince the server that they are indeed a member of the specific group chat without without leaking anything about uh, their identity. Um, yeah, and, and also. The server doesn't actually know who are the members of any of the groups. Right. So basically, this is also what what's happening at uh, output registration phase, like word by word. You just need to replace uh, group chats for coin joins, and then yeah, it's the same. All right. But we are not ready with this yet, um, as we need to find out the details. But hopefully next week, we can also talk about those details which are missing right now. Yes. Uh, thank you, guys. Uh, is there anything else you would like to, to go through or say about this? <laughs> I guess we can talk about a little bit about how we are hoping to still improve on the ACL scheme uh, as I well as this. So we didn't um, um, touch upon the advantages of the quark approach than the ACL. So right? the main difference here, uh, so in the original algebraic Mac paper, uh, things are simplest. There, as part of the show protocol, um, 
the so part of like the outputs of a uh, credential presentation are a list of commitments to the same attributes uh but with different randomizations and those are just plain old Pedersen commitments um the uh signal paper so the the newer key verifiable anonymous credentials one um has a slightly more complicated uh if, if you scroll down uh, you can see uh, here, yeah. So, um, MI is the only type of attribute that we care about. So, MI is the original commitment in our case, and Z is a random value that the user generates. So, the final commitment that's presented to the coordinator in this case is uh, G uh, of YI, that, that's, uh, sorry, G sub YI, that's a generator for um, one of the attributes. We only have one of those. Sorry, we only have two of those. And this reminds me, we didn't talk about uh, double spending. So um, at any rate, the, uh, the final commitment in here, uh, the, the Z exponent only applies to this generator. Whereas in the ACL scheme, the sort of analogous uh, gamma term uh, is applied to uh, both the additional generator uh, and the entire commitment. So it's as if it's uh, G, Y, I times M, I, that entire thing to the power Z. Um, so this makes the um, uh, commitment openings a little bit easier to deal with uh, relative to uh, ACL. Um, not as straightforward as in the original algebraic Mac paper, but there, um, like the the attribute values need to be um, hidden some other way during uh, issuance. Okay, so um, now that I remembered the double spending, um, uh, a, a cool aspect of these uh, key verifiable anonymous credential schemes uh, compared to anonymous credentials flight is that uh, it's, it supports what's called unlinkable multi-show. Uh, and the idea here is you have a single credential and you can present it multiple times and the individual presentations are unlinkable. Whereas in the ACL scheme, uh, there's a single signature, uh, and that signature verification equation is, is uh, similar to uh, ECDSA or, or Schnorr signatures uh, in that there's uh, like a hash term. Um, so because this approach has no uh, traditional hashing, um, different presentations are uh, randomizable uh, very easily. Um, for us, it's actually a downside because this means that a user can register an input once and then claim it multiple times and the coordinator would not know um, that these two uh, output registrations are actually for the same credential. So uh, a complication of these, uh, th this approach is that we have to add an additional attribute for something like a serial number. Uh, and that serial number would have to be revealed as part of out output registration. Um, and uh, in this way, the coordinator can know that a single credential is only actually used uh, once. Um, I actually just, so I never finished that point about uh, like why the different uh, commitment schemes are, uh, sorry, I am, uh, this is how my brain works. Um, so ideally we would like in both of these schemes to, uh, prove that the sum of the, uh, credentials presented, the sum of the amounts committed to by these credentials exactly equals the, uh, requested output amount. Um, and uh, we have not been able to uh, figure out a simple zero knowledge proof uh, to do this for the ACL scheme uh, because of that pesky gamma term. Uh, it's absolutely possible in theory. Um, it's just that uh, both of us are uh, haven't haven't managed to do that yet. So um, hopefully next. this becomes a little bit simpler um, using uh, using this approach. Let, let's put some pressure on us and, and promise to the viewers that we will have the solution by the next episode. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> In two weeks. 
<laughs> All right. So, Lucas, are you excited to implement it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's scared, but yes, it's excited too. Because I have to read a lot. No, you will learn a lot and that's good. I mean, I, I think that's the main advantage. Like, uh, we learned so much along the way, so I think you will enjoy it as well. Yes, I, I, I hope so. All right. Um, how about you guys? Did you understood everything? Yeah, you, you you always saying Adam that you will only understand if you if you code it. So I'm I'm waiting for that point when I can start coding. <laughs> it's very true. Uh, there's a lovely uh, Python uh, library called uh, Petlib, Privacy Enhancing Technologies Library. It's on uh, GitHub, by no? George. Sorry. It's on GitHub, no. Yes, and on PyPy. Uh, and uh, this is basically uh, bindings for uh, open SSLs, like uh, uh, lower level APIs. Um, and oh, uh, uh, Petlib, P E T, I don't know how to spell his name. I think D A N E Z I S. I think with an A initially. Uh, but uh, if you just look for Petlib, maybe, maybe, maybe this. Ah, uh, yes. Okay, cool. So um, this uh, library has uh, in the examples directory uh, an implementation of uh, the ACL signature scheme, as well as uh, uh, key verifiable credentials based on the original algebraic Mac paper. So not the one that we discussed today, but the the older one. Um, and uh, uh, both of those rely on this uh, genzkp.py thing, which is, uh, um, I think it's like a, a general, um, like a Sigma protocol based uh, um, yeah. system. Nice. Where you give the, like the transcript uh, in full for both sides and uh, it computes the actual uh, uh, oh. like final proof values. Um, this looks really nice. Yeah, the code is uh, its uh, not very uh, thoroughly commented, but it has comments in all the right places. And uh, I found it very helpful to understand some of the stuff, uh, um, especially with the algebraic max scheme and how the blinding works. I, I didn't understand that part in the paper. Um, hmm. Evidently, he did and actually implemented it. So... Which is the algebra? Ah, this is algebra in mind. So this is one of the schemes presented in the original paper, the Mac uh, GGM, which has uh, uh, a security proof only in the generic group model. Right. Uh, for us, it doesn't really matter because uh, we don't super care about soundness. We have that fallback of uh, coin join security. Um. Uh, the other Mac scheme is uh, slightly more complicated and uh, only needs a decisional Diffie-Hellman for the security proof. Um, and then this, uh, like, anonymous credentials construction on top of it adds all of the, like, complicated uh, zero knowledge proof stuff um, uh, built out of uh, Mac GGM. But both uh, algebraic Mac constructions are possible. I don't actually remember in the signal paper uh it's like a variant of mac ggm with an additional uh term t uh which is part of the the field and an additional um uh, point w that's part of the secret key uh and if i'm not mistaken uh that addition is uh what allowed them to to prove it uh in a nicer model than the generic group model hmm. uh, but again for our purposes um, like we fall back to uh, Bitcoin security for soundness and uh... hmm. this is really nice 
Um, there's also, uh, I think Isis Lovecraft has um, an implementation of the signal scheme already. I haven't had time to look into it yet, though. Nice. All right. Very good. Um, do you guys have something else to talk about, or should we close this episode soonish? Before closing, please share this repository. I'm pretty sure you can look at the the recording and just just see the repository yes i got it awesome. or you might also put it in the comment section on youtube or something like that all right so uh max was everything clear Silence means yes. So <laughs> thank you guys. <laughs> thank you guys for the for for today's today's talk and I hope you enjoyed it or if not at least learned something and we will continue towards building a better Bitcoin future without making sure no one can spy on you. Alright. So, thank you and have a good night. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.